Hi, it's Amy and Tim, and we are back with day six of our series, How We Retired in Our 40s. Where we last left off yesterday on day five, we were in our closet with our spreadsheet, checking off and filling in our little boxes with our saving progress toward our end goal of $2.875 million by 2025. And what we had learned is that we were ahead of our savings targets, and the reason why we were ahead is because we were spending less. This wasn't something that we were consciously embracing frugality, but it happened very organically. Once we did have that goal number of $2.875 million, with that in mind, we were very careful thinking about every single purchase that we made. When, instead of going out to fine dining restaurants, we went still went out because we had busy careers and we were busy and we're used to a dining out habit, we just switched it up to a cheaper a cheaper option. We might sit at the bar and order two appetizers instead of a three course meal. And that was enough. We might go to a quick casual restaurant and make it a little bit cheaper. Um, one example that I have in there is uh, we took a trip to two of the most expensive cities in the world. We went to London and to Paris, two places for world-class food high-end destinations. And in our past life, I do a lot of our trip booking and what we're going to be doing on those trips. And in the past, we would have booked our airfare and our hotels. And then I would book like the nicest restaurants in town. And we would make that a major piece of our stay. And we would book several of those. On this trip, we were in our different mindset and we looked at it differently. So I said, you know, instead of going to the Michelin star restaurants, which is something we have always enjoyed, let's do the same thing that we're doing at home. Let's do that quick casual option. We find that it is available. I mean, it's very easy to find anywhere in the world that we've visited. Uh, and not only that, but instead of Tim having to bring like a jacket, tie, dress shoes and dress pants just to go out to a couple meals that he wouldn't really wear these clothes otherwise, uh, that it, he could leave all that stuff at home. So he doesn't have to bring bigger luggage. When we were traveling at this point, we weren't taking taxis, we were taking public transportation. So schlepping that stuff up and down subway stairs is a lot nicer when you have a lot less luggage. So there was a, a hidden side of that in that we were able to be light packers because of it. But it, we had a great trip and it was absolutely, it like really had to see the light that we don't need to have that big spending to have a great experience. And I think yep. we saw that throughout throughout everything so we spent less on shopping we spent less so in the past any artist that came through for a concert even if we'd seen them we'd get tickets we wouldn't really even if we were available we would go concerts are super expensive we like people who are big ticket item people and so we stopped doing that and especially because most of the people we had seen so we we had a couple people left on our bucket list and we did see those fortunately but we we stopped with the with the concerts of anybody we wanted to see that was draining our budget um, so I so that was kind of our our, our 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 moving through was we weren't quite embracing frugality but we were very very yeah. conscious so this trip is a, a was a tipping point for us and this is something we'll come back and address later so um, and something we want to address also about uh, the the number that we've consistently talked about this two point what is it eight seven five million dollars so uh, obviously we had fantastic incomes to even think that there was a line of sight to having this amount of money saved up uh, for us to retire in 17 years or whatever. 2025. 2025. 13 years. 13 years. And so, um, so we just want to address that a little bit in that our message ultimately comes around to, and we'll continue this uh, throughout the series, but is that spending less was, was crucial for to us um, making the leap that we made. And ultimately we didn't, this $2.875 million was not our goal. However, the fact that we- What do you mean it wasn't our goal? It, it wasn't ultimately the number that we settled on to get oh, retired. okay, we didn't end up there. We didn't end up Got there. It. And so, um, although we had incomes that would have allowed us to get there, assuming a lot of things like we talked about yesterday were gonna happen for us in the right way, assuming we were gonna keep an income um, that was consistent with what we had historically made, which we made great incomes. And something else that we, we really realized through this process, and I think we knew even before this, as we were saving up um, all along the way, is that spending less money, just period, gives you incredible flexibility. And so I, um, I've been through two career catastrophes, I guess, if you will. One, that the company that I was working for, this was long before I met Amy, I was a, a top performer there. 
and the, the company actually didn't go out of business, but the business unit that I worked for uh, dissolved and was given to another company. So I was given to another company where I think I stayed there two months after they made this transition occur. However, whenever this was happening, um, I, and I assumed that I was going to be at this company until I retired. And so when this transition happened, I basically lasted about two months at the new company because I realized it wasn't for me. And I made a career move to another company and I was there for nine years. And this was a $12 billion telecommunications company that filed bankruptcy after 150 years. And so again there, I was a top performer there as well. And my job just simply went away. I lasted, I was I think the, in the bottom or the I guess the top 10% of people that stuck around almost to the bitter end but you just never know what's gonna happen. So even if you're the, the best guy in the company and you have great success, having extra money in the bank and spending less means that you can get by with less. And so being able to get by with less is a fantastic skill no matter where you are, whether you're making $400,000 a year or whether you're making $50,000 a year, spending less money is a valuable skill to have. Yeah, we wanna leave you with that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow for another episode. Please subscribe below to follow the journey and you can find us at our website at www.gowithless.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks.